folks got Matrix attacked. And they thought, ah, he's a bad guy now, we can do a hit piece. And they released a hit piece. And nobody believed it. And just like I said, everyone saw through it, saw it was garbage, to the point where Vice had to turn the comments off because everyone was insulting them. So then I get released from jail. And now, Matt from Vice is begging me, begging me for another interview, calling me every day, begging me, please, please, please. So I've decided, because I'm such a nice man, most people have a hit piece done about them and they don't talk to that organization anymore. But I'm so nice. I'm gonna have a conversation with Vice News. We're gonna talk to them. We're gonna talk to Matt and message him. Again, I said, an instruction. Again, like a little dog. So we're gonna wait for Matt to call us and we're gonna hear what Matt has to say about the fact that they were dishonest and they weren't particularly good at, oh look. Again, <laughs> please Mr. Tate. Geeks. I can bring you a box of chocolates. If you promise to bring me a box of chocolates, that will increase your chances. And I'll give you an answer within 24 hours. But you have to promise me, Matt, don't lie to me. Now Matt's gonna come back and tell me he's gonna buy me a box of chocolates. What Matt doesn't know is that because he's a dishonest journalist, if he agrees to the chocolates, I'll agree to the interview. But I'm not gonna show up. What we're gonna do is record him standing around waiting for an interview with my box of chocolates. <laughs> you see, isn't the world beautiful? Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> Several days later. Is Andrew hey. coming out to meet us? Uh, yeah, who are you? Matt. This is Matt, and he looks. From the BBC. All right, I'm gonna let him know. Okay, like, great. be right back. Thanks. Okay. There he is. Please, can I have another interview? Please. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what's amazing? What? His stupid ass didn't do what me and you would have done. Jump on a jet and fly somewhere. No. He went to the airport, checked in, whiz air, economy, put all his bags on the thing, through the quickly, let's wait in line for security. Did it went through all that shit. Why is he here to do it? About how about the most famous man in the world, the most influential man in the world, the world who moved the culture? The person who's going to save planet Earth, me. And of course, I decided to do an interview with him to boost his career because he was so honest the last time I gave him a chance. So this is Vice episode two. Yes, it is. But this time, This is all I have to say to him. Okay, well, can you tell him we can give it to him once we're sat down to do the interview? Uh, he wants the chocolate now. He wants the chocolate now? Yep. Okay, because uh, I'm a little bit worried that he's just gonna, you know, brag about us bringing him chocolate on Twitter and not actually do the interview. Uh, I don't know. You so, have to bring the chocolate first. Okay, so is he too afraid to come out and say it himself? Uh, no, he's just tired. He's, he's having tired. his breakfast now. Okay. Like, why are you so obsessed with me? Colony G, 
with his, with his bags, putting them in the overhead. Sorry, bumping into people. I'm a poor interview. I'm a report. <laughs> Sorry for all my bags, I got an important interview, I'm a reporter. Gay! I think he now must realize what's happened. I think he now must realize that he's been checkmated in the grand game of life. They're filming Marina take the trash out. I guess that's the story for the vice. We're reporting. They're filming Marina, our housekeeper, take the trash out. I guess that's a vice story now. Misogynistic influencer Andrew Tate has garbage which he uses to litter the landfills and damage the ozone layer because of global warming. Matt Shea. <laughs> 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 Fucking nerd. Two bags of rubbish from his house that contain microplastics. Get a life, you fucking gay! Think about microplastics. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. He likes making garbage documentaries, doesn't he? They're still there! <laughs> oh, have some pride, Matt. Come on. Yeah, just fuck off, Matt. Matt's the kind of guy. Come on, Matt. Matt's the kind of guy. Get in your head! Matt's the kind of guy who will arrange to meet a girl for dinner, show up at the restaurant with his £8.64 in his pocket, ready to, <laughs> ready to try and show her a good time. Her not show up and him sit at the table for five hours. Well, maybe he'll talk to me. Looks like time. You know the worst thing? I don't feel sorry for him 1%. Neither should anyone else. These are the worst type of people. They're literally agents of the Matrix. Agents of the Matrix. They will edit your speech and cut your sentences up to make it look like you said something different. They will mi misrepresent you the Matrix in the most callous and grotesque and most promiscuous and absorbent manner. And now he thinks that he's going to come here and, what, interview you again? The Matrix agent. agent. The PNG. Oh, there he's coming. Matthew. It's good, thanks. Um, are you gonna let us in to interview you? I thought I sent someone out to say, come back a bit later, I just woke up. Oh, okay, yeah, we can come back later. What time works? Uh, what time is it now? Two, two thirty. Perfect. See you then. Perfect. Ah, Matt, do you have my chocolate? Uh, yes, I brought you chocolate. Good, because there's no access to the house without chocolate at two thirty. I want you to know that. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Let's sit down and have an interview, and, and then you can have it. No, no, no. You don't make the rules around here, young man. You will give me my chocolate before you come into my house at two thirty when we do our interview. Well. Because I've got, there's a DNG outside and it's his, his negative energy, you know what I mean? So just thanks because of the DNG. Yeah, it's affecting your brain power. It's like, I'm so cool, but when a nerd is outside begging at the gate, like, oh, little nerd, please interview me. Like his, his patheticness and his insidious weakness is in the atmosphere. And I have to make sure that I channel my chi. That's why you got to breathe smoke in. Got to breathe in smoke, massage my Pure super body. brain. To purify my existence because there's some DNG at my gate who won't give up. Please, please, let me talk to you. 
You look like a geek. So get fucked. I finished my lunch. Finished my 15th coffee of the day. And continue to conquer the world and be fucking rich. Yeah, that's a good point. Talk some DNG. Don't end up like a DNG standing outside a man's gate. That would be horrible. Be Imagine horrible. flying with Air Economy to stand outside a man's gate. Your only big shot in the world to ever be noticed again. You look. Is that guy to come out like a geek? And there is less than zero percent chance. The worst thing is, I said come back at two thirty, and he arrived on time to the minute. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Punctual. <laughs> Maybe if I get there exactly on time, he'll let me in. It is my life's ambition to never be anything like him, and then a little worm who comes along and does hit pieces on people while trying to pretend to be their friend to try and get hits on the internet and everyone realizes he's a little worm and then he's so desperate to matter that he has to beg the same person he betrayed for attention again because he is a complete dork. Who would ever talk to him that's relevant now? No. So I mean, you're not talking to him, but... Talk to who? The DNG. Nobody gives a fuck about him. Hi, I'm DNG, can I have an interview? No. Yeah, no. You look like a geek. I'm gonna fly here and I'll consider it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. You're calling me. You're busy. I'm super busy. I can see you're busy. I'm working. Repelling his negative orgones. Yeah. Hey guys. Again? Yep. Do you have the chocolate? Yeah. Okay. Can I have the chocolate? So. I can... the, look. Obviously. What we don't want is to give you the chocolate and not do the interview right. No! Okay, so, but I, I know you want to film us giving you the chocolate. So if you or Tate can come up with a way where we're both happy, then let's You're do it. You're not going to get an interview without the chocolate. Yeah, yeah no, that's fine. So how about uh, if you tell Tate he can come out and then we can hand him the chocolate as we enter and you can film it? Okay, I'm going to tell him, but he's pretty busy, just so you know. Busy so, with what? With work. It's not your business. Oh, really? <laughs> it's not your business. Boy, why are you so obsessed with me? Okay, so I spoke with Andrew, and uh, you either give him the chocolate, and you'll okay. have an interview, or you don't, and you don't have no okay. interview. Okay, so, fine. Yeah. Deal. So where's the chocolate? Where's he? He's inside. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, but you have to give him the chocolate first. Okay, if he comes out, we'll give it to him. He, he won't come out. If you give me the chocolate, I'll get the chocolate to him, and you'll have an interview. Your name's Stig, right? What's your name? I'm Alex. Alex, okay, yeah. right. So you're obviously a smart person. You know that if I give you the chocolate, then there's a high chance he'll never come out, right? But at least it's a chance. If you don't give, give him the chocolate, you, you won't have an interview. Yes, but I'm, I'm not going to give him the chocolate and then just risk him not appearing. So what I could do is hand him the chocolate as we walk in. That's a smart idea, right? No, because he, he doesn't want that. He wants the chocolate. He's going to do an interview with what you, do you after. Th what do you think about all this? Um... Mm, I'm you're, outside now. You don't have any thoughts? Yeah, no. Well, you don't Nothing. have a brain, you can't think. It's not that, it's just, I don't want to get involved in this. But you are involved, you're literally filming me. <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> you but live I, with that, Andrew Tate and you're that's it, me. you know. Okay, so anyways. So, so what do you do for Andrew Tate? Do you work from full time or? Again, it's just, uh, you have to give me the chocolate. Or if not. So what he just sends you have to ask us to give him chocolate. So what, does he pay you or do you work for, for this? Yeah, how does it work? <laughs> no. So what? So you, you, you this you, is the last time I'm gonna come out. Yeah. So yeah, you either gonna give me the chocolate. I'm gonna give him the chocolate. You'll have an interview. If not, this is getting quite it. silly though. No! Isn't it? I mean, is he gonna do an interview with us even if we gave him the chocolate? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> there is a bigger chance. He's gonna do an interview with you if you bring him the chocolate. I'll call him.
Okay, since he's not picking up. Hi, Andrew. Uh, look, so I know you want to film. You want to film us giving you the chocolate. So, um, I, you know, I'm happy for you to do that. I just, as I'm sure you know, like I don't want to risk a situation where I give you the chocolate and then uh, we don't get in. So why don't we do something like you come out and you know we speak face to face and I give you the chocolate as we walk in. I don't think you're a good intentioned actor, Matthew, based on your previous performance. So I need payment in advance, unfortunately. Well, look, can you suggest a way in which we can uh, find, you know, feel some sort of assurance that you're going to speak to us? Like, maybe if you come out now and we can hand it to you face to face. The problem is, last time I trusted you, you acted in bad faith. So this time you must trust me. That's the circle of life. It's the balance of the universe. It's yin and yang, Matthew. You must trust me. You must place your faith in the top G and hand over the chocolates to payment his presence and then you will see perhaps you'll be rewarded but this is you have no faith in me despite me allowing you unprecedented access to my private network and home in which you were a bad faith actor if you still are scared about losing your heavy financial investment of six pounds in a box of chocolates then you will not get your interview well it, it's a hard line Matthew. The, the thing is it, it, you, line that will not break. you know i'm a I'm a journalist. Give so Alex the chocolate. Just you can't just uh, you know you can't just assume that if you're nice to someone that they're gonna not betray you. I mean, a journalist would rather stay the truth. Imagine a world in which just because someone let you into their house, they didn't report on the truth about you. I mean, that would be insane. The the problem is, it's becoming quite obvious that you're afraid of doing an interview with us. You are one pathetic loser. <laughs> okay, how about um, one square of chocolate? Half an hour player? One, half an no. hour. No, that seems like a give. fair trade. That's no. fair. Well, he said no. is give you chocolate, right? So if I give, if you give you a square of chocolate. No. Okay. See you. One hour later. Yes, Matt. Hi, Andrew. Um, yes, so I've just been interviewing your fans outside. Um, they all have been saying very nice things about you. One guy who you helped get over his weed addiction. Another guy who's come all the way from Miami. Um, I'm a nice guy, Matt. You didn't know? Well, look, you know, there's... It, it, it is frustrating that I can't uh, give you these chocolates because I literally have no choice in the matter. I'm bound by, like you said, my boss. If there's any, you know, way that you can think of where I can come in and hand them to you as I walk in or anything, then that would be great. Otherwise, I don't know. Otherwise what, Matt? What happens? Maybe just you'll have to let me know when maybe you're next free or something. Do I miss out on the opportunity of a lifetime? You know, I mean, you'll probably be able to get an interview with other media outlets, I'm sure. But I, I do think the BBC is a really big and important platform. And I think that... Uh, probably. It's different. Probably. Well, yeah, sure. Defin definitely. Definitely. That's right. Let's be professional. Let's be clever with our language here. Let's be on point. I can definitely get another okay. interview. And I can get another interview with the BBC. I can just say, send someone else. They'll do anything I want. Mm, they, they probably would want to send me. That's the, but, but, uh, but, do you want me, do you want to test that theory, Matthew? Yeah, no, you can. I can, you can, honestly, if you, if I, <laughs> if you go to them, they will, they will say, well... You're telling me, me, Andrew Tate, most famous man in the world, can't get an interview with the BBC unless you're involved. Is that the level of hubris you I operate under? I've come, I've come here, but wait, just so... Okay, look, the other thing is, because of our... The fact that we have this sort of, for better or for worse, reputation where somehow, you know, we've become sort of internet nemeses, um, even though that's not how I see it, then um, it probably would be uh, 
reach a much wider audience and be viewed and talked about a lot more. And uh, that's just the brass tacks of it is what I think. So, you know, if there's any, if there's any way, even if you want to do like a quick one through the gate, like I think that would be great, but it's, yeah, my hands are tied, read the chocolate situation, but I don't know if you have any suggestions. No, I don't want to do a quick interview. I want to do an in-depth, detailed interview. My first interview under house arrest is going to be world breaking. It's going to be massive, perhaps the biggest internet interview of the year, perhaps of the decade. I own the culture and I want to do it properly, but I can't do it without the energy, which will be procured from chocolate. And then I'll feel confident within myself to get the energy required to deal with the fake news media. But then but when I come through the door from that point there, I'm pretty sure that I can just give them to you. So then you will have them. That's a, that's, I'm, I'm still bowing down to your demand there. That's a, I think that's a pretty good. I'm, I'm a fair man, Matt. Unlike you, I do not do snakery. I do not do tricks and games. I do not pretend to be someone I'm not. We are very different people. I have given you a very fair and simple, a very fair and simple parameter. You can decide if you want to comply or if you want to fly home again. I'm sure that they flew you on a private jet. They flew you on a jet, right? You said that you didn't care if it was a hit piece or whatever. I'm not, I, all I said was I was doing an objective documentary the whole time and I want to, you to give you the chance to give your side of the story. That's oh, why I'm- Oh, you're giving me a chance. Coming, you're such a nice yeah. guy. <laughs> But Thanks. These accusations are coming out regardless. What accusations? What, the same girls from 10 years ago got disproved? Do you think anyone cares about that? Please, Matthew, you're not giving me a chance. I'm giving you a chance. I've given you a very fair parameter. It's a parameter that you can either adhere to or you can go home and fly home economy on Wizz Air. I don't give a fuck. It's up to you. Stop calling me. You know the parameter. You decide. Thank you. So, so where's, your, where's your private jet? Um, but look, I know it didn't work out this time. Let me know if you ever want to do it again in the future. And while we didn't, you know, naturally film an interview, obviously we, we, uh, have the phone calls that we had outside your house and I guess we can use those unless you've got an issue with that. Yeah, I do have an, I do have an issue. I haven't signed a consent form. Okay, well, in that case, um, I guess, let me know if you change your mind at any point. Maybe in May, like your lawyer said, we can do another interview. Perhaps, but yeah, I didn't sign a consent form and it's a shame the BBC with their big budgets made you fly economy with that. It must be very annoying for you to fly in and out for no reason. I feel sorry for you, man. Thank you, yeah, it's a struggle. It's a struggle out here. You'll survive. I win. Nervous. <laughs> 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 <laughs>